CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Unidentified flying object. David, we've made a sighting. Our mystery drama, The Sighting, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Farrington and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by... remarkable, are not uncommon. There have been, who's to say, thousands of them, maybe tens of thousands, if you include those that have gone unreported. Of course, some people poo-poo them as optical illusions or weather balloons or light reflections on clouds or even just plain imagination. But others, many others, take them quite seriously and would like very much to know what and why and possibly even who they are. Sarah and David have certainly seen something, though they don't agree about what it was. You know the trouble with you, honey. You let your imagination run away with you. You see a funny light in the sky and wham, it's a flying saucer. Well, you can't say it wasn't a flying saucer. (laughs) You don't know what it was any more than I but do. But, Sarah, when you can't explain something a little, well, little out of the ordinary, you don't pounce on the most unlikely explanation you can find and close your mind to all the others? Well, look who's talking about closed minds. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I'm a little bit conservative. Bankers get that way, I'm told. And then are you ever a banker? Well, don't knock it. It buys a lot of goodies. No contest. I, I think I'll go next door and ask B and Harry if they saw it. Want to come along? So What? Oh, oh, yeah, the, the, the thing. Sarah, I, I really wish you wouldn't do that. Why not, for heaven's sake? Well, I just as soon it didn't get around. I mean, that we saw... Well, the first vice president of a bank doesn't see flying saucers. He just doesn't, Sarah. <laughs> okay. The first vice president didn't see it. He's as blind as a bat. Yes. But his wife saw it. Sarah, look. I don't want you to talk about it. How do we know what they are? How do we know what they're doing here? What the purpose is? How can we be sure that they don't mean us some kind of harm, David? I think we ought to report it. No. You're not to say a word about this to anyone. Now, look, honey. Old man Ellsworth is talking about retiring again, and this time J.D. thinks he means it. 
And if he does go, J.D. will almost certainly move up to chairman of the board, and that leaves the presidency open. I'm the first vice president. But can't you see, Sarah? Look, I, I think that's wonderful, David. You know I do, but I can't see what it has to do well, with... I've just told you. I'll have to ask you to take my word for it. I want you to promise not to say a word about this, this, this thing we saw, not to anybody. Anybody home? Oh, hi, B. You got any shopping to do this morning? I don't think so, no. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Okay. They're supposed to have some fresh whiting at Avery's today. Doesn't David have a big thing about whiting? Yes, David has a big thing about whiting, but he's more likely to get cold stew and leftover parsnips. Oh? Garnished with arsenic. Bad one, huh? Honestly, B. You ought to thank your lucky stars you're not married to a banker. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you ever try living with a man who was in wholesale pharmaceuticals? Give him whiting. That's my advice. He can't eat and quarrel at the same time. Uh-huh. Um, did you and David see that thing come over last night? Come over? Fly over, you know. Looked like a flying saucer to me. But Harry said it was a jet with some fancy new kind of lights or something. I never heard a jet sound like that. Oh, uh, no, I, I guess we must have missed it. Why, doesn't Harry believe in flying saucers? Wouldn't believe in one if it landed smack on top of him. They still playing bridge tonight? As far as I know, it's your house. You want me to bring anything? Money. It's our turn to win. You want me to get some wine for you, if Abel has it? Oh, would you mind? Uh, not much. Sure, of I'll bring it over later. I'll tell you one thing. I don't ever want to fly in a jet that sounds the way that thing last night sounded. David? Oh, morning, J.D. You busy right now? Nothing top priority, no. Well, come on into my office. I've got some news for you. Sure thing. You, uh, read this thing this morning? Hmm? Oh, Times. Mm -hmm. I glanced through it before I left the house. A couple of people out your way claim they saw a flying saucer. Oh, I read that, yes. One of the fellows belongs to my club, as a matter of fact. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes next time he goes into that locker room. You know, I don't understand people... I just can't figure them out. Fellow sees something up there he never saw before, and he goes running around like a chicken with its head off, yelling, Flying saucer! <laughs> <laughs> well, then he is some kind of aeronautics expert or something. <laughs> Sit down, David. Thanks. What would you say if I told you old Ellsworth finally made up his mind? Well, I'd say congratulations, J.D. It's retiring the end of the year. Made up his mind yesterday afternoon, apparently. Plans to announce it sometime later today. Congratulations, Dave. Oh, no, no, no. It's premature, my boy. I'm premature. Board has to vote on the new chairman. There's no guarantee they'll pick me. I can be pretty crusty sometimes, you know. Made some enemies. <laughs> That's your year's salary. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bankers don't gamble now. <laughs> Had to vote on the new president, too, of course, but... Uh, You've got me in there lobbying for you. Thanks, J.D. Ah, oh, nonsense. Best man for the job. Would be anyway if he didn't sit around loafing all day in the boss's office. Well, I guess I'd better get back to work. <laughs> I guess you had. And, uh, David. Yes, J.D. Try not to see any flying saucers. <laughs> Wouldn't help a bit. <laughs> do that. Do what, Sarah? 
When you talk, your lips don't move. Well, anyway, I, I couldn't see them move. It, it, it sounded as if you were talking through that little black box strapped on your chest. Yes, you are quite right. You see, we don't have any vocal equipment. We? Who's we? We come from a very long way off. Like Mars? No, much farther. Another galaxy altogether. I told David. I told him. Yes, we sensed that you were sympathetic. Then, then, then what do you use? Mental telepathy? That's what you would call it, yes. And the box? I think into the box, you might say. It comes out English. Other languages, too, of course, depending upon the setting. I'm glad you are not frightened. If I were, I wouldn't let you know. Look, where you come from, do you, do you just walk into strangers' houses? I am very sorry, but I had to speak to you. It's really quite urgent. About what? We need your help. To do what? Take over the earth? You mustn't say that. You mustn't think it. We're on a friendly mission. My colleagues and I were what you might call a scouting party. We must know more about your planet before we can be sure that it is safe to... We want to help you. We're, we're doing all right. Are you? Really, Sarah? Look, what, what's your name? You keep using mine. Don't you think I should know yours? I have no... We do not use names in the sense you mean. I have a designation, of course, but there is no way to convey it to you. That's pretty weird. And how did you find out what my name is? We were able to pick it up. We get very dim readings from your minds. Actually, yours is the clearest we've been able to pick up so far. We need someone to, uh, to cooperate with us so that we can learn more. And that's what you want me to do? Yes, Sarah, it is. Um, well, come back tomorrow. I don't understand. I'll have to talk to my husband about that it. That is exactly what you must not do. Do you understand me? You must not consult your husband you're not to tell him even that you have spoken with me. I want you to understand that very clearly. He is not to know that we have contacted you. Then you'd better just go back onto your flying saucer and fly away. I'm not sure I want to speak to you again. You will, though, Sarah. You will. You don't believe me, do you? Of course I believe you, honey. Have I ever accused you of lying to me? All the same, you don't believe me. Uh, what What did he look like, this man you saw? Well, he wasn't green, if that's what you mean. He didn't have tentacles or flippers or any of that. His, uh, his hair was kind of coppery and funny. More like chicken down than hair. I... I didn't notice the color of his eyes. His face seemed all right, except that his ears were flat against his head. He was tall and oh, too skinny to look healthy. By our standards, that is. Mm-hmm. How was he dressed? Ordinary. Except for a box he had sort of taped onto his chest. And brown slacks and a kind of yellow shirt open at the throat. But the, the clothes didn't look right on him. You don't believe one word of this, do you? Now, Sarah, I haven't said I don't believe you. All I'm saying is that you're, you're tired and overwrought. And seeing things. Look, I'm not sure I want to play bridge tonight. Sit there all evening being humored. And, well, I'm not at all sure I want to do it. Uh, look, uh, I'll tell you what. You trot upstairs and take a little rest. Now, wait, then, uh, just let me finish. You are tired. You are overwrought. You don't deny that, do you? Well... So why shouldn't you take a little rest? Now, what's wrong with that? 
And when you get up, if you don't feel like playing bridge, we won't play bridge, okay? Doesn't that sound fair enough? Well, all right. Fine. Right now. You close the bedroom door and see if you can't actually sleep. Will you do that for me? Okay. But if I... I did see that man and talk to him. I really did. The whole thing and hallucination? Let's not be too sure it wasn't just because we heard it ourselves. After all, we were primarily interested in what Sarah heard, weren't we? Or thought she heard. Let's not rule out the possibility that we were hallucinating along with her. Perhaps we'll learn the truth about that when I return shortly with Act Two. spent the evening playing bridge with B and Harry Vincent. But their minds haven't been on the game. Sarah's is more on the events of the day just ending. How often do you speak with a man from outer space? Now the game and the evening have finally come to an end. <laughs> David, my friend, we ought to do this more often. Yeah. You owe us now. Nah, you can check my arithmetic if you want to. You owe us three dollars and seventy-six cents. With the cards you two held, how could you lose? Oh, <laughs> come on, don't grouse, David. About ten more nights like this, and maybe we could get even. <laughs> oh, it was all my fault. I told you I didn't feel like playing bridge tonight, Dave. Oh, forget it. You were no worse than I was. Well, after all, it's only a game. Yeah, said he, tucking away his winnings. <laughs> I wonder if I drank three dollars and seventy-six cents worth of beer. Well, there's more out in the kitchen. Come on out. Maybe you can break even. No. What are those two cooking up? Oh, I don't know. Is the fight still going on? With you and David, I mean? Left over from last night? Mm. You haven't been acting like yourselves at all tonight. Either of you. Oh, it's one of those things. I guess it happens to everybody. Mm. David! Don't you think we ought to go now? You have to work tomorrow. Okay, honey. He's a good man, you're David. You don't have to worry about that. David? Hmm? What did Harry mean when we were leaving? Who's a good man? Oh, honey, turn the light off, will you? I'm dead. It's something to do with me, isn't it? Okay, you'll have to know anyway. I, uh... I asked Harry for the name of a good psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Yes, earlier. I called the doctor before we left, too. Told him it was an emergency. I got an appointment for you for tomorrow morning. Well, it is an emergency. You don't realize how... <sighs> I knew you were going to be angry. Sarah? he's any good, maybe he'll be able to convince you I'm not seeing things. Now, Sarah, I've got to get to the office on time this morning, today of all days, but I'll meet you at the doctor's office. Now, your appointment is for 11 o'clock. You won't forget it, will you? Look, you, you don't have to be there if you have a busy day. I can handle no, it alone. No, no, nothing of the sort. And afterward, I mean, after the, uh, the, uh, session, we'll have some lunch. Someplace fancy, huh? It'll be all right, Sarah. You'll see. Oh, it's you again. Sarah, I must speak to you. Do you know that you may very well be nothing but a figment of my imagination? I think that you are tired. Did you sleep well last night? What do you think? And wouldn't a figment of my imagination at least move his lips a little when he talks? I can see that you are very sleepy. Oh, yes, very sleepy. Well, I, I didn't ask you in. You are almost too sleepy to stand, aren't you? Here. Why don't you sit here? 
you'll be much more comfortable. Well. Yeah. That's better, isn't it? You're able to relax now. Relax and rest. Relax and rest. Float and sleep. You are asleep now, aren't you? Yes. Fast asleep. You will do as I tell you. Yes. I will do as you tell me. Good. Pinch your arm, Sarah. With your right hand, pinch your left arm. No, harder than that. You can feel nothing. You feel no pain. No pain. Very well. I am going to perform a minor surgical operation now. You will feel no pain, of course. A simple incision at the base of the skull. There will be no bleeding. Now, what I am inserting, Sarah, is a very small device which your body will in no way reject. It is in every way compatible. By means of this device, it is better you know this, Sarah, although you will not be aware of it later. Through this device, we shall be able to read your thoughts and participate in them, guide them. This will be possible at great distances, light years, actually. You are now sutured, what you would call sutured. There is no wound, no scar. You felt no pain, did you, Sarah? No, no pain. And yet your own doctors would find this type of surgery very difficult if indeed at all possible to perform. Now, do you know what I have just done? Yes. Tell me. You've planted a device at the base of my skull so that you can read my thoughts and and guide them. Yes. You must listen carefully to what I tell you now. Do you understand, Sarah? I must listen carefully. You will emerge from your hypnotic state when you hear the sound of my vehicle leaving. Is that clear? Yes. When I hear your spaceship fly away. You will not remember having seen me today at all. Please repeat that for me. I will not remember having seen you at all today. And all you will remember about my visit yesterday is that you made it up as a joke. It did not really happen. I didn't see you yesterday. It was a joke I made up. Very well. When I leave the room, you will fall into a deep sleep. When you hear our vehicle moving away, you will awaken, feeling as though you have a long, healing night's rest. Is all that clear? It's all clear. You busy, Dave? Hey! No, come on in. Aren't you a little out of your territory? Uh, well, yeah, I am. I knocked off and came over here because, uh... B called me a few minutes ago to say she's seen the damn thing, too. Seen what? The saucer, the flying saucer. Oh, B saw it? Yeah, says she did. Says it was hovering there right over your backyard with a door open, like practically the whole side of a ship, she said. And a kind of stairway coming right down onto your lawn. Oh, come on, not B, too. What are they trying to do to us? Well, to tell you the truth, Dave, I don't think B was putting it on. She can't lie worth a nickel. And she sounded scared, really scared. And uh, anyway, that's not all for Pete's sake. She'd started out shopping, see, and forgot to take a list with her, so that's why she went back. I mean, that's how she happened to see the thing in the first place. All right, all right, all right. So she went back in the house and was watching through the window, and I swear, Dave, this is what she said. 
A tall, skinny man came walking out of your back door and went up the stairway and into the saucer. Then it made that crazy whooshing noise like we heard the other night. I did hear that, Dave. I honestly did. And it didn't really sound much like a jet. Well, anyway, it made that noise and took off. Like a thousand miles a minute, B says. You think it's true? Well, unless B's blown her mind, too. She said she wanted to go right over to your place and see if Sarah was all right, but she was afraid to. Yeah. Yeah, I... I think it might be true, Dave. I think... Anyway, we... ought to go out there and see. <laughs> She must be waiting at our front door. Oh, I thought you'd never get here, you Is two. Is Sarah all right, B? I haven't seen her. I was... Well, I can't help it. I was scared. You didn't see that awful-looking thing just hanging up there over your backyard or the weirdo that came out of your house. Can we go in now? I don't mind as long as I'm with you. Yeah, thing. yeah, okay. I don't suppose... One of them's still in there. I mean, since the thing took off, it wouldn't go away and leave one of them behind, would it? I'm still not ready to believe You'd it. You'd believe it if you'd seen it. Sarah? Yes, David? Oh, I, I thought you were going to meet me at the doctor's office. Well, what's this, a delegation? Are you all right, Sarah? Why wouldn't I be all right? Sarah, did that... Uh... Did anything happen this morning? Not a thing. <laughs> Not unless you count me falling asleep, sitting bolt upright in a straight kitchen chair. I, I really must have been dead on my feet. The, uh, uh, the man from the flying saucer didn't show up? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't you think we've had about enough of that nonsense? Nonsense? Sarah, I saw him. I saw him come walking right out your back door, plain as day, and get into his saucer and go. I saw that, Sarah. I really did. Oh, please. Let's not anymore. So, so I made up a silly story. No, I'm sorry I did. I never dreamed you'd all take me so seriously. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, there's something wrong here. You were taking it seriously enough last night. Now, don't try to tell me you weren't. It was just a joke, David. A joke? <laughs> I wish you could all see yourselves. You look as if you'd just come in from a funeral or something. Sarah, if it was just a joke, why didn't you say so when I told you about the psychiatrist? Oh, I'm all mixed up. I swear I saw a tall, skinny man with funny hair get into a flying saucer and fly away. If it was just a joke you made up, Sarah, maybe I'm the one who needs a psychiatrist because I saw that. I know I did. All right. Sarah's going to keep her appointment, aren't you, Sarah? I don't see any point, David. You'd just be throwing your money well, away. Well, still, still, if I ask you to, you will, won't you? Well, if you, if you want me to, why not? I can't see what good it's going to do, but I guess it can't do any harm. No, Sarah. What? What? I didn't say anything. You are not to see the psychiatrist. Is that clear, Sarah? You will not. Who said that? What? Nobody said anything. Didn't... Didn't you hear it? B? B? I didn't hear anything. You will do as you are told. You will refuse to see the psychiatrist. Who are you? Sarah. I can cause you pain, Sarah. I can cause you great pain. I'm... It, David, what is it? Somebody keeps... Don't you hear that voice? I don't hear anything, Sarah. I do not want to cause you pain, Sarah, but I will if I must. You are not to see the psychiatrist. So come on. We better go, honey. The appointment's for 11 o'clock. All right, I'm coming. I'm sorry, Sarah. Truly, I am. David. Oh, oh, God, David. David, make it stop. Sarah. Make it stop. Ah. Ah. I hope you didn't feel the pain along with Sarah. 
It would have convinced you, of course, as I'm sure it has convinced the people in our story, that the man from outer space is real and not altogether friendly. If there is any doubt lingering in your mind, however, I believe it will be dispelled when I return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago, News Radio 78. The willingness of the open mind to accept the new and seemingly miraculous, at least as an hypothesis, has always faced opposition from the less flexible mind which finds the status quo easier to live with. David, however, as well as B and Harry, has had a convincing demonstration that the new is only the as yet unknown. B and Harry are waiting in Dr. Freuling's reception room. David has taken Sarah into the doctor's office. Now, just lie down here and rest and help me with her, will you, Mr. Hughes? Please, please, make it stop. Uh, Honey, uh, do what the doctor says. Uh, Lie down and try to take it easy. Just, just, just do as the doctor says. She seems to be in a great deal of pain, doctor. Oh, she is in pain. There's no doubt whatever about that. What causes the pain, this is what we must learn first of all. Well, can't you, can't you give her something? Well, I think best not to do that until I have learned what has happened to her. Jimmy, when you was to speak with this doctor, this psychiatrist, tell him only what you have been ordered to say. You have seen no man from a flying saucer. It was only a silly joke. Leave his office. Nobody can force you to stay. And go home. Do only this and there will be no more pain. You are asleep now, Sarah. You are in a deep, restful sleep. You are resting in a quiet, lovely place where there is no pain. No pain, only rest. You will not sleep. You are uncomfortable. There is no severe pain now, but you know there will be if you listen to this man. Now, Sarah, I want you to tell me exactly what happened this morning before David came back from his office. I... I, I can't, Dr. Foley. Uh-huh. Well, it is not yet. We try again. Oh. Oh. Dr. Foley, yes. if it's going to keep on like this, I think we'd better just quit. Stop! Stop it! Stop it! We are on the right track. He was there this morning. He told me that much before he got through to her again. We are going to win, Mr. Hughes. Win or lose, what's going to be left of Sarah? All of her, Mr. Hughes. More than there is of her now. Sarah, shall we try again? I can't. Dr. Roiling, you won't let me. You don't know how it hurts. It's no good, Sarah. You know it is no good. Now, try to relax and clear your mind of everything but what I say to you. I'll try. Sarah, what did the man do when he came to see you this morning? He said he, he, he asked Oh, oh, no! No, God. He asked me to help him. Stop it! Stop it, please! Sarah, you are under my control, not his. Pain will never stop until you do as I say. You must do as I tell you. Bear it, Sarah. You can bear it if you try. Help me, and it will all be finished. Sooner than you think. <laughs> How did he want you to help him? It will be worth. The pain will be worth. He, 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 he wanted me to... He, he, he wanted me... I'm going to make it stop. He wanted you to what? He, 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 his contact. He, he couldn't... Oh, 
hard. He, 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 he said he couldn't read. I, I, I thought I, I was... Oh, oh, oh. He can't kill, sir. What if I decide to kill you? I, I don't care. I don't care. Enough, I... Dr. Furling, that's enough. You were to what, Harold? What did he want you to do? He, he, he put a thing in my head and he knows what I'm thinking. He can, no! He, he can hurt me with it. Oh, God! She's fainted. Doctor, is Wait, she... wait, wait. Her pulse is strong. That's good, good. Is she... She will be all right. He cannot hurt her while she is unconscious. He, he put a thing into her head. Is that what she said? Is yes. that what you heard her say? Yes, yes. Isn't there something you can do? Uh, Miss Jamison, I want an ambulance at once. Emergency entrance physician's hospital. You may get Dr. Carter for me. Tell him physician's hospital at once. <laughs> It was good of you to come, Dr. Carter. Yes, yes. What have we got? A device has been implanted in a young lady's skull, I believe. I cannot be certain. Implanted by whom? How long ago? Only this morning, as I believe it. By whom? Now, it's a long story, and the patient is in intermittent pain. All right, all right. We'll have to have x-rays. I have already made x-rays. They are here. Uh, have you read them? Have you found anything? Well, I am a psychiatrist. I think there is something, but I do not wish to prejudice your judgment. Oh, very well. Well, is everything clear here? It's all right. Nothing here. And not... Wait a minute. That little particle. Is that what you mean? How does it look to you? It's like a pinhead. Oh, yes. It's foreign, all right. Must be. But implanted? Very small. Large enough. I am afraid for my patient's reason. Perhaps her life. I do not know. I have to see her before you operate, Dr. Carter. Well, she's already been sedated. Believe me, Dr. Carter, it's imperative. Well, if you feel so strongly about it. Sarah? Oh, I said to you, David. Yes. Feel better now? Oh, yes, I feel fine. Just sleepy. He isn't bothering me right now. I I, I mean, there, there isn't any pain. Do, uh, do you think you could contact him, Sarah? Oh, I expect he's around. Why? I want to get a message to him. What message? David, I don't want no, you No, no, no. I, I just want to talk to him, Sarah. I just want to meet him. Is he uh, listening now? Oh, I can't tell, but I, I imagine he is. Uh, David, you must... I just want him to meet me and talk to me. It's as important to him as it is to me. I'll, I'll go back to the house. There's nothing I can do here anyway. I'll go back to the house and meet him there. I have something important to tell him. Important to him. Well, if he's listening, you could you could just tell him now. No, 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 not now. I'll meet him at our house as soon as I can get there. I'm afraid, David. You sound as though... Just, just give me a kiss, Sarah. I love you. I have taken more trouble than you realize, Mr. Hughes, to meet you here. What is it you wish to tell me? I have a proposition for you. I am willing to listen for a short time, though. The surgery is about to begin. You aren't going to interfere, are you? Hmm. Your wife 
is a danger to us. I am sure you can understand that. We're reluctant to take a life, of course, but our mission is of greater importance. Listen. Now, just listen. Why does it have to be Sarah? What's the matter with me? What do you mean? I mean, put your gadget, whatever it is, in me. Why couldn't you do that? I, I cooperate, don't you see? You wouldn't have any of this resistance you get from Sarah. Why? Why would you turn against your own people to help us? Aliens, as you call us. Why would you be willing to do that? Willing? I'd be doing it to save Sarah's life. W wouldn't you do as much for your wife? We do not have wives. Oh. Well, my wife is very dear to me. There is... There's nothing, I guess, that I wouldn't do for her. So you... Be see... quiet. What? Please, do not speak. I am in communication with my colleagues. Oh. Tell them... Be quiet. Oh, God, please. All right. You'll do it? No. We have decided against using you. Huh? We have learned a great deal from you. This... Love is your word. This is an unfamiliar factor. This love must be taken into consideration. We are not sure that anyone so afflicted would be sufficiently stable for our purposes. And what about Sarah? It is a risk to release her, of course, for we cannot erase her memory, but... We have taken greater risks. Then you won't interfere with the operation? Not interfere, no. Not the way you mean. We shall help. Your surgeon will need our help. Oh, thank God. How is she, Doctor? Ah, fine, fine. I have never seen anything like it. Would you ask her yourself? Sarah? Oh, David, it feels... I feel so much better. I feel, I feel perfectly well, as if... as if nothing ever happened. Thank God for that. I have never seen such surgery. A motion picture at fast speed. His hands moved so quickly, I would never have believed it. Did you see him? The, the man from the saucer? Yes, honey. He's real. You'll be glad to know that. Oh, I do. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Is she really all right, Dr. Furling? Quite, yes. She is free now. Yes, I'm free. But I, I don't think they've finished. They're too strong. We're too vulnerable. I'm safe, yes, for the time being at least, but... I don't know if the world will ever be really safe again. Maybe it will. They've uh, discovered a new factor. Maybe it's stronger than they are. Well, how strong is love? The new factor on this old earth of ours. Stronger than hatred? I like to think so. Hatred makes the headlines, I know, but love, in its unassuming way, has been making the world go round for a good many years now. I'll be back shortly. David is president of his bank now, and doing a very good job of it, too. He and Sarah are even happier, have an even more secure marriage than before their adventure. The near loss of something dear often underscores the dearness of it. Well, whether you come by UFO or some more conventional method of travel, be here to join us for our next chilling story. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Nat Poland, Ralph Bell, Joe Silver, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, 
a preview of our next tale. You can't get anything past our border guards. Yes, it was, it was just an idea. Besides, we, we, we have to fly out of here. I'm going to a convention, and you, you're going on a tour. Now, let me apply some scientific thinking to this. Pro- How can I get that platinum out? Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. You don't believe what? What just flashed in my brain. It's so simple, so, so, so ridiculously easy. And it's absolutely foolproof. What is? This plan, this idea. Tell me. No, 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 darling. You're, you're too important. Well, if I'm so important, shouldn't I know? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>